The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The optimist proclaims that we live in the best of all possible worlds, and the pessimist fears that it's true. However, whether the world is good or bad, or even indifferent, at least there is unanimous agreement that this is the only world we have. Or is that agreement unanimous? Oh, yeah, Mrs. Taylor. She was a witch. Karen, surely you don't believe. You can't believe in witches. Then why did the milk go sour? And why did the horses go lame? And why did the barn burn down? Answer that, Mrs. Taylor. Natural causes, Karen. So? Isn't the witch a living creature? Isn't the witch part of nature, too? <laughs> Our mystery drama, The White Ghost, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Ralph Bell and Ann Williams. It was a gentleman named John Haywood who back in the Elizabethan era said, you can't have your cake and eat it. Well, he may have been a fine poet, a perceptive observer of human comedy, but he blew this one. Because the fact is, you can have your cake and eat it. You can have it both ways. You can even have it always. You can have whatever you want and whenever you want it. That is, provided you know how to go about it. A gentleman who obviously knows how to go about it is Mr. Donald Taylor. How lovely it is, Donald. Yes, that is beautiful music, Phyllis, darling. Not just the music, but, but everything. Everything? Oh, yes, everything. Does a woman have the right to be as happy as I am? <laughs> well, darling, that sounds like a question that might be probably posed on some soap opera program. <laughs> and I feel guilty. Oh, why? There's so many people I know who are miserable. Well, darling, that's not your fault. <laughs> I can't believe I'm so lucky. You're not lucky. You work very hard. I do? <laughs> At what? At being you. At being the most wonderful wife a man could ever dare to hope for. Oh, excuse me, nurse. Hello. Darling. Uh, yes. Oh, you're not alone. Uh, no. Have you told her yet? Uh, no, uh, Congressman. But you promised. You promised you'd work it out. Yes, well, of course. With uh, her? Uh, certainly. When? 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 Well, um, you know what it says in the Bible, Congressman. To all things, there's a season. Don, I must see you. Uh-huh. Uh, Congressman, can't it wait? Donald, if I don't see you tonight, I'll kill myself. Well, uh... That is a rather extreme position. I mean it, Donald. I'll kill myself. And before I do, I'll send a letter to all the newspapers telling them about us. Oh, I see. You'd better get over here. Well, uh, Congressman, I think this does call for a meeting. I'll be there within the hour. Is something wrong, dear? Oh, it's just that if you elect a fool, you can expect him to behave according to form as a... Uh... It's a little uh, political problem which requires my presence. Oh, shall you be out late? Yes, I'm afraid so. It'll be a long, boring evening, but the proposed legislation is of the utmost importance. I'm so proud of you, Donald, darling. My dear, I shall return just as soon as I possibly can. Oh, I've stopped telling my friends about you. Oh, have you? They simply cannot believe that anyone could be so kind, so considerate, so gentle. <laughs> Don, 
Donald. Oh, Donald. <coughs> Donald! Donald, why, why did you strike me? Don't you ever do that again. Don't you ever call my home again. Don't you ever threaten... Oh. And don't you ever forget it. Donald! What's come over you? You'll kill yourself and write a letter to the newspaper. Which paper would print it? Which paper is anxious to invite a libel suit? I wouldn't write a letter to any paper. I just said that because I... Because I'm... I'm so frightened and miserable. Trudy, we've come to the end. The end? Of what? The end of the affair. Uh, affair? Every affair has a beginning, and uh, whatever begins eventually ends. It's the law of nature. But I love you. And you love me. Oh, do I? You... Well, you said so. Donald, you said you were unhappy, desperately unhappy at home. You, you said you wanted to leave her and marry me. Were you lying to me? Yes. Donald. I've paid generously for the privilege of telling you a lie. And you have quite a bit to show for it. The apartment, clothes, jewelry. Why do you think I agreed to the apartment? Why do you think I agreed to everything? I believed you. I believed you, Donald. Oh, now sit down, Trudy. I know you come from a small town, a very small <laughs> town, but surely no one is that naive. I believed you. Now, look, I want to do something for you. I have a friend. He's quite wealthy. What? What? What are you saying, Tom? Well, wouldn't you like to make another connection? What? A gentleman who would certainly take the very best care Don't of Don't you dare talk to me like that. I'm not that kind of a girl. Oh, my dear, you are. You are now. And you should be grateful to me for seeing to it that you will be highly successful. I was a good girl, a good girl. Oh, I guess nobody ever talks like that anymore. Oh, go ahead, laugh at me. Trudy, Jim Pendleton is absolutely wild over you. He saw us that night at the party. Small town girls like me. We come to the big city. We, we think we're going to become somebody. You know, he said to me the next day, Don, who was that absolutely smashing girl you and were with? And this is what we become. Everything always works out for the best, Trudy. Now, look, why don't we have a drink, I huh? never thought it would ever that it could ever happen to me. Jim Pendleton's really a very lucky devil. He is? When I think of you and Jim, I know I'm going to be jealous. Well, would Jim object to sharing me with you, Donald? <laughs> Jim is quite busy. <laughs> he does go out of town a great deal at that. And uh, I guess what he doesn't know. You know, you're really a wonderful girl, Trudy. Am I? Oh, yes. Of course, you are understandably upset. When I walked in here, I must admit that I was too, but... You're basically a level-headed girl, you know? That's why I was attracted to you in the first place. Good girl, you're behaving admirably. Now, come here. Sit down, hmm? I've got a gift for you. Have you? I thought it'd be a kind of a going away gift, but uh, <laughs> looks like you're not really going away. That's yet. a coincidence. <laughs> I, I have a gift for you, too. Oh, really? Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> I've been keeping it in this drawer. Oh, yes? What is it? It's an ounce of lead. Trudy. Now, Trudy, you're crazy. Yes. I believed you. That should prove I was crazy. I told you, put down that revolver. A gift from me to you. Now you can't get away with I this. I don't want to get away with anything, Donald. After I kill you, I'll turn the gun on myself. I told you, listen to me. There's nothing you can tell me, Donald. Not anymore. I told you. I don't care anymore. Goodbye, Donald. I, I, I can't be found here dead in your apartment. I'll write a note. I'll explain it. Goodbye, Donald. It doesn't fire. Why doesn't it fire? Oh, all right, give me that gun. Let go of me. You fool. Quit pulling that trigger. There might be a live round. Let go of the gun now. Why doesn't it fire? Let like, go. Let like... go. Trudy. Tru... Oh, no. No. <laughs> Good morning, darling. 
A delightful breakfast. English muffins and Mendelssohn. Pour you some coffee. Thank you, Felicity. What time did you get home last night? Oh, very late. How'd the meeting go? The meeting? Oh, uh, well, problems. Have any trouble or with the congressman? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, is there uh, anything new in the paper? Yes. There's been a murder. Mm. Unfortunately, that happens too often. We've become such a violent society. Uh, who was murdered? Oh, her name was Gertrude Nelson. Well, you should know who she is. Should I? At first, the name didn't mean anything to me either. Then as I read on, it said she worked at the Cloverdale Country Club. Well, that's our club. Yes. And it's Trudy. Trudy? Yes, Trudy. The stunning blonde-haired girl who was cashier in the coffee shop. Oh, Trudy. Someone broke into her apartment and shot her. Broke in? Yes. Well, there were signs of a struggle as if she'd put up a fight. And a rear window was broken. Her empty purse was on the floor. Evidently, some money and jewels were taken. Do the police have any leads? Oh, the paper doesn't say. Oh, poor girl. She was sweet. The one that did this thing. Does he realize he snuffed out a beautiful young life? Or has murder become so ordinary, so commonplace? Oh, now, darling, darling, it doesn't do to let your thoughts dwell on morbid matters. Besides, there's nothing anyone can do for her now. I'm sorry you're so upset. Oh, she was a poor girl trying to make something of herself. The world is so unfair. My darling, you have to accept the world for what it is. Oh, yes, I, I suppose so. Well, I must get to the office. But uh, you haven't had breakfast. There's no time, dear. I'll uh, see you this evening. Is something wrong? Oh, what could be wrong? I don't know. It's just you seem so abrupt and so preoccupied. As if something's troubling you. Oh, dearest. I look at you, and I don't have a worry in the world. Miss Powers, I have to concentrate on this report. I don't want to take any calls for the next half hour. Oh, didn't I just tell her? Oh, damn, it's a private line. Hello. Hello. Donald, darling, it's me. What is this? Me, Trudy. You're dead. I want you to know I'm very happy. Who is this? You would be happy here with me. Now, listen. With me. With me, Donald. Now, look, look here. We would be so happy together here, Donald. It's a joke. It's a practical joke. But who... Who knew about Trudy and me? I was careful. No one, no one knew about us. If anyone knew, they'd they, 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 they tell the police. Wouldn't they? Well, the police haven't called on me. They would if they knew. So if it isn't a joke, but... Oh, no, it can't be, it can't be. The other thing either. It can't be, Trudy. It can. It can't. It is. It isn't. Life is filled with questions. True or false. Multiple choice. We're always being confronted and tested. Particularly if we're involved with murder. But on this show, in addition to questions, you also get answers. A few will be delivered when I return with Act Two. Murder will out. Who says so? Well, in a variety of statements, scores of poets and sages assure us that murder cannot be kept secret or hidden. Is that really true? How many murders remain unsolved? How many killers evade the law? Unfortunately, quite a few. 
Donald Taylor is doing a bit of soul searching. He didn't exactly kill Trudy. It was self-defense. They struggled for the gun. She actually killed herself. But can he afford to have even that much known? Of course not. Dear Phyllis, this letter will serve to introduce Karen Hagstrom. You know how you complain it's so difficult to find an adequate maid? Well, Karen worked for Bert's mother. A lovely woman, perhaps a bit superstitious, but we all can't be perfect. From here, it's on to Singapore and India. See you in six months. Love, Lolly Smith. Hmm. Well, Karen? Yeah, ma'am. I do need a maid. And if Mrs. Smith is so taken with you, I'm sure you must be wonderful. I hope you will be pleased with me, Mrs. Taylor. As you can see, I can't get around much. Oh, I will take good care of you, Mrs. Taylor. It's difficult to work for me. I have to be wheeled about constantly. I shouldn't say this, I suppose, but I do have difficulty in keeping servants. Oh, you look like a lovely lady. Lovely lady. (laughs) I'm an old lady. Oh, no. Oh, it's so sunny. Let me wheel you to the terrace, and I will brush your hair. Oh, you seem to be a very nice person, Karen. Thank you. And Mrs. Smith is an excellent judge of character. And if you can start immediately... Darling, you look magnificent. I have a new maid. (laughs) Well, I hope you can keep this one. Oh, yes, she's a perfect gem. Lolly Smith recommended her. She's worked for Bert's mother. She's so kind... So gentle. No. Excuse me, dear. Hello. Hello. Donald, darling. Who? It's so wonderful here where I am. You'd love it. Who was that, darling? Uh, Um, it's the wrong number. You seem so upset. Well, actually, it, it wasn't a wrong number, dear. It was an obscene call. Oh, it's a dreadful world, Donald. Sometimes I don't feel so badly being out of... Oh, uh, Mrs. Taylor. Yes, Karen. Oh, Karen, this is Mr. Taylor. Oh, pleased to know you, sir. How do you do? Uh, Will you want to wear the red sweater tomorrow? I'll wash it out. Oh, don't bother. Mrs. Prentice does the laundry. Oh, no, no. I'll do it myself. Uh, uh, Ring when you want me to put you to bed. I will, Karen. Thank you. She seems capable enough. You know, as she stood here near the table in the candlelight, she seemed to remind me of someone. Oh, yes? Who? For just a moment. It was just the way the light reflected on her face. She reminded me of that poor girl. Which poor girl? The one who was murdered. Trudy. Trudy. Well, how can you say that? Well, this one is at least uh, 10, perhaps 15 years older. Now, darling, for almost a month, ever since that poor girl was murdered, you you keep bringing up her name. I I can't help it. Well, why? You hardly knew her. I I mean, it's a a tragic thing. But but she was so beautiful. Do you know what I said to myself the first time I saw her at the club? For no reason at all. I said, if our little Madeline had lived, she might have looked like that. Oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't your fault. Phyllis, I... Don't, don't say anything, darling. You don't have to. Well, I think of the child dead and you in the wheelchair all these years. We must uh... accept fate and make the best of our lives. Oh, we have, haven't we, darling? You've been the most wonderful husband. Oh, let one of the servants answer, dear. Oh, it's ringing on the private wire. Donald... Darling? Was it the same? Yes. But, darling, who would know your private number? Let's let's put it from our minds. It upsets me. Darling, you you can't afford that. I know. Perhaps uh, I'd better get to my room. No, no. not again. Hello. Donald? Oh, hello, Jim. Don, about that order we place with you. You know, I've been thinking about it, and you could do a lot 
better. Just mull it over and get to me in the morning, huh? At regards to, uh, Phyllis. Yeah, uh, sure. Oh, uh, oh, just between us, pal. Ah, oh, what a shame about that Trudy. Uh, she sure was something, huh? You know, you're lucky nobody knew about you and her. That is, nobody except me. But I'm your pal. Now, keep my mouth shut. I know you will, Jim. Oh, and about the price. Now, I am positive you can do a little better if you really put your mind to it, huh? Night, pal. Good night. What was that all about, dear? Uh, that was the, the, the obscene phone call. Don, what are you saying? Wasn't that Jim Pendleton? Yes, dear. Donald, these past few days you've been... So preoccupied. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll, uh, I'll have to look through some papers. Perhaps your uh, maid had better help you to bed. Hmm? Oh, yeah, Mrs. Taylor. She was a witch. Oh, now, Karen, surely you don't believe. You can't believe in witches. Then why did the milk turn sour? Why did the horses take sick and die? Why did the barn burn down? Answer that, Mrs. Taylor. Natural causes. So, and a witch is part of nature, too. A witch is a living thing. Oh, this is so comfortable, Karen. Ah, I shall be back after midnight to help you turn around and fix the bed. But, Karen, dear, you won't get very much rest. Oh, I am not here to rest, Mrs. Taylor. I'm here to work. <laughs> Mrs. Taylor? Yes, Karen? It's two o'clock in the morning. I came to see if you are awake. Oh, I am. Would, uh, would you open the window, please? It's stuffy in here. Oh, yeah, Mrs. Taylor. <gasps> what is it, Karen? Oh, the spooker. Karen? It's, it's a, a ghost. A white ghost. Look. Look, it's coming, it's coming here. No, no! <laughs> I am so sorry. I, I bothered everyone. Now, Karen, you know there's no such thing as a ghost. Now, where was this uh, ghost, Karen? She came from the woods near near the greenhouse and on the lawn. She? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she. The white ghost. Oh, she's always a woman. And this woman, she had long blonde hair. She's always a girl who's been murdered. And she comes back. Now, that's nonsense. Oh, no. But it is true. She always comes back to the house of the people who have loved her to let them know she still loves them. But we don't know any girl who has been murdered. Yes, we do. But she was a stranger. I loved her. Now, look, it's time we all got to bed. Good night, Karen. I'll see you to Mrs. Taylor. Yeah. Uh, go good night. Poor girl. She made it seem so real. Could it be true? Could what be true? She's convinced she actually saw a white ghost. Darling, you do need your rest. Try to sleep. Jim, it's Don. Oh, Don, hey, do you know what time it is? It's exactly 2.45. Yeah, well, that's a.m., buddy, a.m. I have to see you. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. First thing in the morning. It's morning now. Look, it'll take at least an hour for me to get to your place or for you to get to mine. It's only a half hour if we meet halfway. <laughs> well, you sure you want to? Well, you want that price reduction, don't you? You're the doctor. All right, take the shore road and pull over near the interstate sign near exit four. Let's meet in exactly 30 minutes. Don? Hello, Jim. Hey, well, what's all this about? Let's start at the beginning, Jimmy. For a long time, you've been trying to buy my company, haven't you? Don, 
It is 3.20 It would a. solve a lot of your raw material headaches, wouldn't it? Don, what are you driving at? But as chairman of the board, I've blocked the sale, right? Don, what? So Don... how do you get me out, huh? By making me look bad. Forcing me to resign. Forcing you to... Or re... else putting me in the middle of a scandal. Scandal? Or even try to drive me out of my mind. I, I, I don't know what you're... I don't know what you you're don't... talking... You don't know what I'm talking about, huh? Well, you're the only one who knows about Trudy and me. You could tell the police about our relationship, huh? You are crazy. Am I? You're applying the pressure on all three fronts, aren't you? Don, I am not going to do any such thing. It was you who hired an actress to pose on the phone as Trudy. And tonight you even had her get into some flimsy thing and float across my lawn as the ghost of Trudy. Now, Jim, you and I know there are no ghosts. That dead girls cannot speak on the phone. Look, look, I've heard just about enough. Oh, yes? Well, that's all there is. And so now... Dad, what, what, what are you doing with that? What are you doing with that? Uh... Oh, what, what do people usually do with, uh, with a gun? Kill, huh? No, no, Donald, Donald, we're friends. Yes, we were. Until you saw a way to get ahead of me. Donald, please... Don't kill me. Well, Jim, I have no choice. You could always go to the police, and then the story gets out, and I'm through. Don, Don I swear to you, I'll, I'll never... I'm sorry, Jim, I'm sorry. You shouldn't have hired some girl. I, I didn't. I swear to you, Jim, I, I never... I said I was sorry. But you just can't kill another human being. Oh, yes, you can, Jim. You can even get used to it once you've been in on it. No! Don, please, I didn't do anything. I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh. Good morning, Phyllis Darling. Morning, dear. I don't have any music playing this morning because I'm afraid it wouldn't be appropriate. I have very bad news for you. Jim Pendleton's been murdered. What? I heard it on the radio. Jim? Now, wait a minute. You, you can't mean Jim Pendleton. Poor Don. He was such a good friend. How? Where? Did... Last night, on the shore highway, someone shot him. Oh, these killings, the senseless violence. Oh, Donald, it's dreadful. Oh, we... We played golf the other day. Fortunately, he wasn't married, so there's no family that would be deprived. Jim... Jim Pendleton? Why, he was one of the nicest human beings. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Donald. <gasps> Darling, I'm so lonesome without you. Please, come to me. No. Donald, darling, what is it? What is it? <laughs> What is it indeed? Or more properly, who is it? Trudy, we know, is dead. And if Jim isn't paying someone to impersonate her on the phone, or to behave as her shade, then with what are we dealing here? For this kind of answer, you have to be here for the third act, which I shall bring in just a few moments. Intelligent men do not believe in ghosts, especially in broad daylight, when all's well with the world. Yet there comes a time at night when no one is too sure, especially if it's a trying time, a time filled with fears and guilt. Then the veneer of a few thousand years of civilization is stripped away. Then... We are all back there, in the caves, shuddering at shadows. Yeah, Mrs. Taylor, the place is haunted. Haunted? Yeah, from the old country. The old people say the white ghost is the unmarried young girl that dies. Oh, come, Carrie. Yeah. 
And she dies for love? Well, the only young girl we knew who died recently was poor Trudy Nelson. And she didn't die for love. She was murdered. This is her ghost. And she did die for love. Uh, <clears throat> Karen, uh, would you bring in some fresh coffee, please? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'll yeah. have some too, Karen. Uh, no, uh, no, not until dinner. That's what your doctor said. Phyllis, darling, how can you listen to all that nonsense? Well, it isn't nonsense if she believes it. Well, don't you find it upsetting? Well, why should I? I think it's rather charming. Besides, she's such a wonderful maid. But how could I do without her? So gentle, so understanding. How can I ever thank Lolly Smith for recommending her? Uh, hello? Donald. Oh, no. Donald, come with me. Come with me. Now, listen. Why do you avoid me? I come to the house to see you, and you avoid me. No. Donald. Uh, it's all right, dear. Those obscene phone calls. You should report it to the police, now shouldn't you? There's nothing anyone can do. Oh, Don, you're not well. Oh, I wish this maid of yours wasn't so superstitious. It's, it's, it's kind of getting to me. What is... Oh, this, this ghost she sees. You know, that girl has been on our minds ever since... Why? I wonder why. Uh, uh, Mr. Taylor, uh, someone to see you. Oh, yes? Who was it, Karen? Well, he said he was a policeman. Police? Yeah. Well, why would... Well, I did, uh, probably has to do with Jim Pendleton's death. But why would the police come here? Well, why? Because we were close friends. That's why. That was a stupid question. Oh, darling. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I understand. Where is the police officer, Karen? I put him in the library. Thank you, Karen. Uh, you were Mr. Pendleton's best friend, Mr. Taylor? Uh, no. We were friends. Mm -hmm. Did he have any enemies you knew of? Well, what do you mean by enemies? Well, people who felt he injured them. People who may have hated him enough to kill him. Well, the truth is, Lieutenant, I didn't really know him very well. We belonged to the same club. We played golf together. Mm -hmm. My company sold raw materials to his company. I see. But although we were cordial, spent some time together, it, uh... Well, it was... Uh, well, now that I think of it, it was all on the surface. So... You see, I, I couldn't tell you very much. Well, you both belong to the uh, Cloverdale Country Club. Yes, that's right. And you knew a Miss Trudy Nelson. Well, yes, she was the uh, cashier in the coffee shop. Uh, yes, she was murdered a month ago. I know that. Both Miss Nelson and Mr. Pendleton were killed by bullets fired from the same gun. Oh? Well, how, uh... How is that possible? Oh, it's a fact. What it means, or how it fits in, we don't know yet. Uh, how well did you know Trudy Nelson, Mr. Taylor? How well? Mm -hmm. Well, I was aware of her as the uh, cashier at our club. She was extremely attractive. Well, that's about all. Did you ever see Miss Nelson uh, away from the club? Meaning what? I think the question is clear. Well, so is my answer, no. Hmm. You know, Miss Nelson has a sister. She came in recently from the Midwest. She said that Trudy used to call her on the phone every week and chat about the people she met here. And she mentioned you. Me? Yes, yes. The sister said that Trudy had told her that uh, you and she were having an affair. Now, that's a lie. She, uh... Really had no evidence to support it, so we weren't going to embarrass you. I just thought I'd let you know what her sister said. Where is her sister? Hmm? Oh, probably gone back home. She looked like a big farm girl. Well, if you should think of anything that might be helpful to us, please get in touch with me. Yes, I certainly will. Hmm. Hello. Darling, you're in danger. The police, they know something. What? What could the police know? The gun. Why did you use the same gun? 
Oh, poor Donald, you were not made to kill. You were made to love. Come with me. Join me. Join me. Hello. Hello. Oh, I'm going mad. I've got to stop this. I can't let myself go. I can't. Karen? Karen? Yeah? Yeah? What is it, Mrs. Taylor? Do you hear something? Hear something? No, Mrs. Taylor. I, uh, What time is it? It's four o'clock in the morning. I, uh, I was asleep and... Uh, I heard the telephone ring yeah? in uh, in Mr. Taylor's room. I couldn't go back to sleep. And then I I heard footsteps. Oh, there? Outside. Oh, it might have been your husband walking. Oh, no, no. The steps were too light. It was a woman's walk. Are you sure? I saw her. You saw her? It was the ghost. Oh. The white ghost. But how could you see her? Well, if I lean all the way over, I, I can look out the window. Oh. And there she was, by by the greenhouse. I thought I heard voices in here. Phyllis, what are you doing now? Oh, yes, I, I heard the phone ring in your bedroom. Who, who could have been calling so late? Well, it was nothing, dear. It was nothing at all. But, Donald... I'm sorry it woke you. Well, I'm glad it woke me, because I saw her. You saw who? Trudy... Trudy. The ghost of Trudy, the white ghost. The white ghost with the golden hair. That's impossible. The same ghost Karen saw out there. Oh, Don, tell her we understand. But, Phyllis, I... Darling, I'd go out there if I could. You must do this for me. Well, why? Why? Because, because I feel that if one of us told her we understand, she'd be able to rest, finally. Phyllis, do you realize what you... Do it for me, Donald, for me. But it's madness. It's real. Donald, darling, it's real. I saw her. I saw the white ghost with my own eyes. Well, I can't... Uh, are you afraid? But why? I mean, what's to fear? She was a fine young girl. How could she harm you? But, Phyllis, I... Karen. Yeah, ma'am? Karen, will you go outside with Mr. Taylor and, and help him find the white ghost? Oh, oh, please, oh no, no, please, no, for I me, couldn't. Karen. Besides, I... look, look, there's nothing to fear. She was such a lovely girl. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I will go. Karen, have you been around the other side of the greenhouse? Yeah, Mr. Taylor. Did you see anything? I... I don't know, Mr. Taylor. Oh, what do you have there? It's a gun. A gun? Well, what you saw, what my wife saw, was most likely a prowler. Oh, a gun is of no use against a ghost. Well, where is your ghost, Karen? I don't know. Ghosts do not come and go when we ask them to. They do as they like. Oh, I, I, I had better go back inside to the missus. Good night, Mr. Taylor. Good night. Oh. Oh, the thing to do is not to lose my head. Whatever is happening can be explained. Can be explained rationally. Explained somehow. What? What's that? Oh, no, it's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing. There's nothing out there. And... And everything's all right. Donald. Yeah. Who? Who are you? Trudy. You're Trudy. Oh, no. Donald, come with me. Escape with me. Escape? The police officer, he suspects. Why else would he ask about you and me? Oh, I'm dreaming this. No. Yes. No, you must come with me. Where? It's a lovely place. We'll be so happy. I, I, I can't leave my wife. She hasn't been your wife in 20 years. You've been pretending for 20 years. Come with me. Live with me. You know how wonderful it is with me, don't you? Yes. You want to come with me. That's why you brought the gun, isn't it? 
I, I, I truly, truly, I didn't mean to kill you. It's just that sometimes I, I do things I can't control. I, I know. I didn't mean to kill you. I didn't But mean you didn't I mean. kill me. People who love each other never die. You and I, we will live forever. Now, look in my eyes and raise the gun slowly to your head. Don't look at the gun. Just look into my eyes. You won't feel anything. Just look. Yes. Oh, yes, thank you, Lolly. Well, you knew how sensitive Donald was, how things disturbed him. I suppose he just... Well, Jim Pendleton. Don adored him, had been murdered. Oh, and uh, I wanted to thank you so much for Karen. Although I couldn't keep her, she was so unnerved by Don's death. Said it was the white ghost that did it. She left. She was such a wonderful maid. Well, well, you know, Karen Hagstrom, who worked for Bert's mother. What? You don't know Karen Hagstrom? But, Molly, you gave me a, a letter of recommendation. You didn't. I simply can't believe it. You never heard of the woman in your life? So, there you are. How do you want it? We are dealing with Trudy's ghost. Or, Jim Pendleton did hire someone to pretend, and maybe no one told her to quit, so she just kept pretending. The police lieutenant said Trudy had a sister. Was that Karen Hagstrom? Well, that's what a properly told ghost story is supposed to do. Raise more questions than it answers. I may have more in just a few moments. Who says there's no such thing as a perfect crime? If you analyze our story, you'll see we have no fewer than three, which shows how prodigal we can be. The death of Trudy Nelson? The case is closed. The murder of Jim Pendleton? The case is closed. And how did Donald Taylor die? Was it suicide? Who knows? That case is closed. But we have plenty of open cases for you right here seven times each week. Our cast included Ralph Bell, Ann Williams, Joan Shea, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant... Dreams. The preceding program was broadcast with the permission of the Columbia Broadcasting System. You're tuned to 89.7 FM, WUWM, Milwaukee.